This camp will be their home for the next three weeks and a base for exploring Vallis Marineris. And you still go for Marineris. Vallis Marineris is basically a vast tear in the Martian crust. It's over 4,000 kilometers long. In fact, it runs so far around the planet that one end of it is in daylight while the other is still in dark. There's a big temperature difference between the day end and the night end. This causes strong winds to surge up through the canyon from the west, which brings up a lot of dust. Now, that could be a problem for our guys down there. I mean, nobody wants to work in zero visibility next to a seven kilometer drop. The floor of the canyon offers a chance to achieve a key mission objective, not just evidence of life, but maybe life itself. Well, there's pretty clear evidence water once flowed on Mars. Most of it's long gone, but in the lowest parts, it might still be there, just a, a meter or so below the surface. And on Earth, everywhere we find liquid water, we find life. This is MVP-14. It's our drilling robot. It gets to the floor of Marineris by balloon. Uh, you have hydrogen sensor, this end, sniffs out the water. Then drilling probe, this end, goes in for the sample. And then another balloon brings it back up on the surface with evidence of life on Mars. Two feet. This is definitely better. It's more controllable. I'm going to patent this. The Mars bunny hop. Hey, John, do you want to give it a rest? I'm trying to do a presentation here. Big day today. We're conducting a robot descent the seven vertical kilometers down to the floor of Vallis Marineris to search for liquid water. Charlie here has volunteered. Ah, here's our ride. Someone order a cab. These three Pegasus so astronauts will see a in. lot more of Mars yes, than their colleague Ivan saw of Their Venus, names. thanks to the We're latest planetary planet, rover. She's going to cost two billion dollars to adapt for Mars. Uh, she can go for 10 hours without recharging. With her, they'll be able to row for up to 100 kilometers away from their landing site. She can go up to 15 kilometers an hour. The journey from the landing site to the canyon takes them over terrain that no one has ever seen. You're very quiet back there. The buggy drive takes them over old riverbeds, which once flowed with water, some two billion years ago. It's a bumpy ride. Take it easy, John. Using a network of Mars communication satellites to navigate their route will take them nine miles from base camp to the edge of the canyon. I think I see the edge. Famous last words. Okay, let's park up here. We can walk the rest. Remembering to keep our handbrakes on? Yeah, yeah. Zay is going nice straight of green up here. Well, tell her if it's any consolation, we're gonna name these cliffs after her. <laughs> yeah, she says that makes all the difference. Tell them to stop enjoying themselves, get back to work. Did you read that? 4,000 kilometers long, seven kilometers deep. The whole place is a geological heaven and I'm not going. But still, I'll, I don't think there'll be any clouds. I'll have a ringside seat. <laughs> Ready for descent. Copy that, Tom. We see no... 150 million miles away, Mission Control monitors another serious health hazard, the sun. Flight, we have a solar weather warning. Hazard class. We should get them under cover. Capcom, tell them there's a solar flare heading their way. S3, Texas, ETA, you have a solar flare heading their way. 
S3, ETA, four minutes after this message. I would like to get everybody undercover. Solar flares send storms of charged particles blasting across the solar system. Unlike Earth, Mars has no magnetic field to deflect the lethal radiation. It's radiation that can kill. A deadly solar storm is heading straight for the Pegasus crew. With it comes lethal radiation. Yvonne and Zoe, on board Pegasus, head for the ship's storm cellar. It's a more heavily shielded part of the craft that can offer them protection for the next few days. Before the solar storm reaches you. That's two minutes behind this message. Back on the surface of Mars, Kirby, Pearson, and Sullivan risk deadly radiation exposure. The first particles will hit them at the speed of light, just a few minutes after leaving the sun. Hours later, radiation levels have dropped, and the astronauts pick up where they left off, at the cliffs of Valles Marineris. One speed, 9.5 meters per second. Zero, eight, zero degrees. It will take six hours for their robot Charlie to reach the floor of the canyon. Altitude 6520, down at 12. Looks like he's drifting up the alluvial fans. Lateral drift. Okay, John, enough pictures already. Let's get some rocks. I wish I could see Mars without a visor in front of my face. I wish I could just taste it. From what I understand, John, what you taste is your saliva boiling on your tongue. Okay, I've got another subangular hematite. We seem fragment. to be getting some false positives some here. And, uh, Our second borehole is dry. It Moving on. It's like a fairly fine grained, gray, fairly solid frag. Drilling borehole number and three. Subangular. It's covered with dust. Classic kidney shaped crystals. Wish I could get the dust off it. Blow on it. Distinct metallic luster, millimeter sized crystals. There's a magnet for this. Yeah, Rudy, you go ahead. There's a storm brewing in the western end of Marineris, heading east. How big? Most of it's still on the night side. I think it's a canyon storm, not a global event, but it's got potential to reach you. Okay, roger that. Charlie's drinking! Water. On the third borehole. Aries Pegasus, what's your status? We did it. Uh, we're just, uh, wrapping things up here. How long till we get it back? Four hours. Anchor's released. Do we wait? We might not get another chance. That is a big storm. Look, the wind's blowing Charlie off course. This planet is jinxed. What are we standing here for? Tom, I don't think you want to be traveling when this hits you. This isn't a dust. 